Welcome to MedShark Insider with Bill Fukui, your expert host on all things medical marketing and SEO. Hello, everyone. Welcome to MedShark's Insider uh, today. And I've got a really special uh, guest today that I think is going to bring some different perspectives uh, to practices uh, because I, I, I come from a internet marketing background and uh, for 20 plus years, we've been doing, you know, websites and SEO, you know, pay-per-click, you know, those types of things. Um, but today's guest is Jen Longton, and she is the founder and owner of Longton Media Group. Uh, and a little background that I know of Jen, and I'm going to have her share a little bit uh, as well, uh, is we both came from a broadcast marketing background 20 years ago. We were both doing TV uh, we were doing we were doing uh, syndicated TV ads for plastic surgeons and cosmetic dentistry, LASIK surgeons, um, and and a lot of that has changed. And uh, Jen has kind of like uh, well, like what we've done, we've kind of changed with the times. And and I think she brings some great perspective. So I look forward to our conversation today, Jen. Thank you so much for having me. It's such a treat to see you. Since I don't get to see you at conferences, I always looked forward to that. It is tough today, I'll tell you. I know, and thanks for always being my photographer since we couldn't <laughs> let everybody in, right? So we had our social media play. <laughs> no, I love it. I love yeah, it. Yeah. Um, okay, so, so a little bit, a little bit of background uh, because I, I don't know if everybody knows you, but I certainly, and I think people in the in our business know who you are. Uh, For our audience, give a little background on on who you are and your kind of uh, what you bring to the table. Well, I'm going to go way back just because it it leads up to where I am today, which is um, I really started my, like you said, in in media and marketing and the television side. Um, I really found my place in direct response advertising. So um, OxyClean, George Foreman Grill, the Juice Man Juice. Wow. Okay. Sonicare. So I worked at the agency where I was spending a million dollars a month, which was so fun, um, on television for OxyClean, who successfully ended up selling to Procter and Gamble. I mean, they had yeah. a phenomenal, phenomenal business strategy. But mm-hmm. you know, I kind of grew up with the sense that if I'm spending money, I have to be able to make money because that's the way that I could buy media. Uh, mm-hmm. And then you know, startup world started happening um, in the beginning of 2000. So I went over to a company called House Values at the time where I was in charge of uh, launching their media department. And it was again, very direct response, but we were in charge of generating leads, which very much was the inventory for, um, for the company. And so we went from eight markets to national. Um, so we were buying local, we were buying national TV, but again, very much with a direct response sort of um, strategy in mind. Uh, and then I just shifted gears into more of a content marketing. Um, I really wanted to fill out sort of my experience in the marketing and media world. I could tell that television was um, going to be stepping down as far as priority. And um, I really just focused the next 10 years of my career in marketing and media. So I'm um, very passionate about PR, um, worked at MarchX, which was all about internet companies, yeah. CM companies doing SEO. They had thousands of URLs that they were selling, um, but really, you know, kind of got my, my bones in that area for about 10 years. Um, I was really lucky working at Real Self. Um, when online video started to take place. And Mm -hmm. I got some of the videos that some of the doctors brought in and I started editing them and I fell in love with that process. Uh, And then being able to put them onto YouTube and then pull back that history that was so long ago um, into that direct response sort of infomercial world, being able to marry both of those worlds together. Um, I've been running my business for eight years now and a lot has changed in those eight years, Um, but I have never looked back. I'm so grateful to be here grateful for all of the clients that I've worked with. And I hope that was not too long. Cause no, I, I think that's great. I think that's great background. And, and, and just to clarify, I think uh, maybe to back up a little bit, when you're talking about direct response advertising or marketing direct response, and, and I came from that background too. Yeah. Uh, but for a lot of practice it was when they talk about advertising and marketing, you know, and, and I think to some degree what's happening with, uh, even with Google and kind of what's going on with all this 
uh, you know, the social distancing and, and, and how do we get more relevant? I, I think this whole idea of branding uh, mm -hmm. has become more important, but, you know, we, we've always worked with practices that, you know, we don't have Nike or McDonald's dollars to just throw out there and, and become a quote brand, a household brand kind of thing. Okay. And I see the value in that, but, you know, we all know that doctors practices, we've got to get that ROI. Everybody talks about getting an ROI and direct response is all about ROI. You yeah. gotta have some, you know, you gotta put some food on my plate. You know? <laughs> Otherwise I can't keep coming to the line and, you know, I gotta have some food on my plate. And it's um, funny because we had, um, you know, back in the day, we had to find out what the orders were that came in from the phone. I mean, you mm -hmm. know, from the phone, how many orders, how many upsells. And then we figured out how to renegotiate either the sales price or to go after and gather up as much of that media as possible. Um, you right. know, the, the internet and just, you know, what we can measure today in real time is, is Amazing. I mean, Google came to me when I was at House Values and they were telling me about this great product called Search Engine Marketing. <laughs> <I was just laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, hey, that's a cool thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but this, you know, the, you know, when you're talking about now kind of moving from a, a, a TV and, and again, I, I still see uh, huge value if, if I've got practices and, and we also work in the legal space. So we do have some attorneys that do, you know, quite frankly, TV advertising yeah. and boy, it, it makes a huge difference in, in even on their digital, um, huge, uh, Google likes brands, Google likes brands. Um, yeah. but we're going to get into, I'm going to ask for some suggestions later on as it relates to brand marketing. Um, because I think you've got some great insights. But you mentioned, uh, you know, PR, that you've gotten into the PR side and the content side. Um, and, and, you know, we always say that, you know, uh, Google, you know, on, on the internet, you know, content is king and, you know, more content. We've, we've all heard that. Um, when we're saying uh, more content and especially with uh, kind of this, world we're living in now where we can't meet at conferences. I can't feet, meet people face to face and even doing, uh, you know, practices doing virtual or online consultations and things like that. This face to face, it, it's no longer an option for us, mm -hmm. as you kind of know. Mm -hmm. But in terms of content, I'm going to, you know, my question is I get surgeons and practices all the time that say, you know, there's only so much you can write about breast augmentation. I mean, and there's nothing new to write about. I mean, what do you, you know, what do you mean more content? What can we do in terms of more content that, you know, breast dog is a breast dog. I mean, what do you say to a surgeon uh, when they're saying, well, it, there's only so much content you can do? You know, it the beauty of experience is you look back and there's common themes regardless of what the technology and marketing is. Um, the most important thing is to really understand what's happening with your customer. Who are they? Um, what are their pain points? Where are they going for information? Um, all of those things, is, is those are questions that you need to be asking on you know, at least an annual basis. Let's be realistic. It's an annual mm -hmm. basis. What right. we found, if uh, you know, if we're talking to a surgeon today, I would say that breast implant removal is huge. So yeah. you might not necessarily be talking about a breast augmentation with implants today, but maybe you're talking about a different spin on that. Hopefully, at this point, um, you know, with eight years of video being the fastest growing marketing medium we've ever seen, faster than Google, faster than email, faster than television, radio, everything you have a baseline, but if you don't have a baseline, you really do want to create those evergreen types of content. Um, obviously okay. video is powerful. Um, it's processed 60,000 times faster than text mm -hmm. for every, what is it? For every one minute of video is worth 1.8 million words of text. You oh, know, that's a big lots, page. <laughs> of, lots of really cool <laughs> things by reputable um, oh. research companies like Forest Research. Um, I would I would really look back and say, have you been so busy you haven't been able to create those baseline evergreens types of content? 
Um, my guess is most of these people have not leveraged them across all of the different places that their customers might be going to. Are you on YouTube? Are you on Real Self? Are you on Google My Business? Um, how are those able to transfer to Facebook and Instagram without being graphic? We're, we're, we go back to the baseline of who is our customer and what do they need in order to make their journey positive? Mm -hmm. Well, and I, I absolutely agree with you. Couldn't agree more on the diversification of those, you know, those messages. It, the number one, it's, it is the message. It's, it's what can we create uh, mm -hmm. in terms of content that is interesting, compelling, useful, yes. um, sometimes entertaining, whatever it may be. Um, but it's also the distribution of that content. How can, it's great if I have this great content, but if nobody ever sees it, what value is it to, to the consumer or quite frankly to Google? Because Google knows when people see that content. Yes. You well, and, and those are not the sexy videos. Um, I will say that, that the most popular video I had ever done that did go viral was a nipple tattoo video. But my guess is most of the people watching that video were probably not interested in what <laughs> happens after <laughs> a breast lift. <laughs> no, I completely but, understand. But I will say that you can add the end screens at the end so you can, you know, engage them afterwards. So, hey, here's a nipple tattoo video, but you're probably a guy there were a lot of men that watched that video yeah. let's talk about gynecomastia let's talk mm -hmm. about what man boob surgery is like and i tell you what that has been one of the most important powerful content pieces on the internet that we had ever created it is a niche piece and you you know it then leads you into something else that they never would have thought that they were really interested in but they are and it's one of the most valuable for surgeons it's a pretty straightforward surgery you know i think the that example is is a perfect example of um you got to be creative you got to think out of the box and you got to do things that it's you know if i even if even in terms of videos i absolutely agree on the on video content i think it's it's not only that you can communicate in a lot more deeper, more uh, compelling content, and they, people consume it and retain it uh, yeah. on, a, on a much deeper level. Um, but it's also this rapport building, it's getting to know you, it's the likability, it's the, all those things that I think, you know, social media has influenced, even what we do on websites, you know, I think you almost have to have a, a social media slant so to speak, to the, to the website, you I know? Agree. Well, it's conversational and that's what we're seeing with conversational. That's great. It's, it's conversational. So, you know, eight years ago, we were doing a, a little bit higher end branded videos for the Q and A videos. I still stand behind that. I think that, you know, as an aesthetic surgeon, if, if you're an aesthetic surgeon watching this, your brand really is important. You don't want to have a poor lit, poor audio video mm -hmm. talking about the procedures that women and men are spending thousands of dollars on. I mean, do them right because they are evergreen. They will last for years. The doctors that I've done those videos for last for years. What do they find as a result of those? Even though there's not as many views, they have find they found the consultation times are mm -hmm. almost none. I mean, literally men and women are coming in saying, you're my doctor. I've watched all of your videos. Yeah. I'm ready to go. I just need to know what the price is. I've already talked to my partner about it. Right. Um, but the conversation, so things have changed. Social media has really changed the conversation. We were talking before we got on that one of the bigger surprises is that some of the lower quality uh, videos and photos that I've been doing are actually getting a higher response. There's yeah. a greater sense of trust. So this mm -hmm. this whole beautiful social media post where they have like two, you know, inspirational quotes and then somebody looking into the sunset, right. all that, you know, SHIT is going away because <laughs> people don't trust it. They want to have real, they want to see the funny Australian comedian that is making fun of the, you know, the beautiful model flipping out of her Maserati. I mean, it's hilarious. So I think it's the conversation, it's the vulnerability, it's the trust, and it's the content, it's the quality and the, and the quantity of content so they can find exactly what they need. Right. You know, it, it, what you're talking about in terms of pe the, the quote reality of it or that this is real, it's not some, 
you know, some polished message or some advertising kind of thing. I think the reality of things or the, um, you know, the trustworthiness of the message or the information is becoming so much more important. Uh, I equate it years ago. I don't know if people remember this, but when you used to see, you used to see a big difference between, say, the national, you know, news, uh, you know, programs and then the local because they were shot on video. Mm -hmm. You saw a huge difference in the quality or you'd see these videos that were shot that doesn't look, they they look a little grainy. I mean, the technology's changed, but the look of it, the look of cable produced or, you know, video produced, you know, footage was not nearly the same thing as like film production. The quality was night and day different. You can see it. Well, do you remember when the, yeah. Remember when the HD came out, I mean, yes. all the TV stations had to change their backgrounds because there were like holes in them. The makeup, the cakey makeup that they wore had to go away. So they had to yeah. remove their faces. I mean, it's, yes. But I will yeah. say those old grainy videos when, uh, you know, programs, they almost had a quote live. It almost looked live. Like this was happening now. Um, even though it was all taped, it looked like it was live. And I, even then, I think the credibility, you you know, don't always think that the most polished, uh, the prettiest things are what, you know, always get the best results. I think there is a place and I think you produce different pieces of content with different goals in mind. Yes. Okay. So, you know, it's not all the same video as a video as a video as a video. There are certain, you know, branding videos, like you're saying, when you, these practices can use for many years, okay, because their brand and who they are and their passions or why they do what they do, that doesn't change. They are the same person, you know, uh, that doesn't change, but the day-to-day activities and the patience that you're seeing and the experience and the expectations, those do change. Those do change, and I and I do think that there's, you know, especially like the Q and A's. I, I absolutely agree with you on on, on those. So a question on the Q and A's. I know you you did a lot of work for Real Self, and you understand the concept of you know getting content out there that it's queried by consumers that they have questions, and there's a lot of value to that. Um, as it relates to video. I'm starting to see more and more of these practices where they have somebody in the practice that's either walking around with their smartphone or their camera or whatever and doing social media types of things. Our yeah. Q&A stuff that they can shoot themselves, would you recommend that they shoot those Q&As themselves or does it, do they really need to have somebody um, you know, come in and, and actually produce those? You know, it's interesting. I, you know, when I created the video marketing company, I thought that I was more into video and I thought that it was about the quality or actually I, I started with an iPad and then I ended up working with a team that was much more professional. The quality was stunning, but really what makes the difference with those Q and A's and those foundational videos that are really your, your sales funnel, they're your sales structure. Um, is the is the work that happens on the back end. So I see people spending tens of thousands of dollars on, uh, you know, 20 videos that are gorgeous, and there is nothing done on the back end to actually make Mm -hmm. them work. There is nothing that actually helps them in the long run. So I would say if you don't have the time to do that on the back end, Um, or the front end, you know, you have to prioritize what it is that's important. You know, when I work with my clients, we, we answer the most important questions. What is surgery like? What are people trying to fix that come in that want this? What is the anesthesia like? What is recovery like? What do you need to prepare for recovery? Things, what do people feel after their surgery? So you're, you're having this emotional connection. Marketing is emotion. So we like to address all of those very basic questions for their top five procedures. But beyond that, on social media, we're going into a high frequency, like you said, these high frequency videos. There's a million other questions for every procedure 
that yeah. is going to that is going to happen. So those, on the other hand, are fantastic to be able to include in social media. Just get your phone. You can get a nice lavalier. Um, maybe you don't have a lavalier, but make sure the the lighting and make sure you can actually hear yourself or closed caption those videos. So mm-hmm. I would say the you know more is better. Okay. And especially having that foundation because that supports companies like yours who are doing the SEO. I mean, video yeah. has increased the effectiveness of landing pages, conversion rates, time on site. So that's sort of a no brainer. Um, again, you have to remember that your brand is important, um, but you, you know, we're in this world where conversation and vulnerability and trust is important as well. So it can't be cheesy. I'm not a big fan of the the fake TV shows that have doctors come on um, and answer those questions. That that's 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 as that's like beyond the cheese that I like to um, recommend to my doctors. <laughs> the cheese that I like it. <laughs> I know that doctors like it because they don't have to just sit in front of a camera. But um, right. I would put that money toward something specifically for you and your brand. Okay, and we talked about earlier, and I'm going to regress a little bit. We talked about not only just creating these messages or how frequently now you're saying create a a, a wide variety of them and the type of content that we can do. Um, Let's go to the the promotion, the distribution, the the visibility of that content. Mm -hmm. Um, What would you recommend, you know, once that content has been produced, um, how do you guys go about, what are the strategies that you're finding the most effective at getting eyeballs on those on those videos, whether it's on the website, whether it's in the YouTube channel, whether it's on social media, uh, what are, would you say are your keys to success for that? Um, again, going back to just traditional marketing and what we've learned, and that is if you're starting out and you don't have sort of an established group of followers, Um, let's be humble here and let's recognize that we do need to invest some money into promoting ourselves a little bit. So um, if you make it, they will come. Mm, If you're lucky, I have a couple doctors who are quite brilliant and put all of everything in at the right place and are like, they're so busy and they are so popular, but Uh that is not true for most most people. What What I have found is that if you have something like a facelift procedure, some of my doctors love facelifts. That is mm-hmm. that is a clear word of mouth type of procedure. Not yeah. a lot of women are doing a lot of work online or they weren't at the time. So if you can start to promote those videos to your specific audience and men, plenty of men are getting facelifts as well. Um, we, we would boost them and we would get thousands of followers or thousands of followers, but really thousands of impressions. And then okay. that would actually work really well. So we would give things a little bit of a kickstart. Um, mm-hmm. It doesn't cost a lot of money to do that. Uh, okay. And then we let, we let everything else sort of roll and we see what works, what doesn't work. And then we kind of double down on what does. Okay. What about email? I mean, I'm, I'm a big proponent of email. I still do a lot of email just for myself, just to, for our agency. I do a lot of informational, you know, email. Where do you see email, you know, in, in practices? I, I really don't see them leveraging email that much anymore. Well, the, the agents are the, the practices I've worked with. It's so hard to actually get an email together. It's so hard to put a special together. It is so I mean, it's one of the many things that they have to do, but I will say email is not a surprise that it is still one of the most effective tools for sales, for reach, for promotion. Um, Any video that we do, it is is part of the email strategy. I have at least 100%, but sometimes two to 300% increase in click-through rates on email marketing when you include a video. Um, So I would absolutely include everything. I mean, it's, it's a, it's just a big, beautiful puzzle party, right? Like you just Mm -hmm. put it all to everybody wants to see this stuff. So why just leave it on YouTube? Like, Hey, I want to send it on email too. Maybe this is the right time. So just always remembering what does your customer want? Where are they? When are they doing their research? And maybe that's the right time. I love email. I am a huge proponent of email. Good, good. But not Um, too much monthly or bi-monthly. That's enough. That's fine. You know, and even practices, you know, what, what I think they, they miss in terms of the value of email isn't no, so much of the broad, you know, 
you know, email blasts to their database and stuff like that, which, which is, you know, remarketing at its best because it's really the, the your, your, your most highest quality, you know, uh, viewers. Um, but also the, the, the strategies of email marketing to hot leads. They really don't think through when somebody fills out a form or does a chat and you get the lead from the chat agency or whatever, they're trying to get in touch with these people. They're maybe sending an email, they're trying to call, but we all know that some people today, especially more today than ever, they may not want to talk to you on the phone. They, they, they've gotten used to this digital communication with, you know, with, Heck, my kids are downstairs and, you know, they're, they're texting me. Just, talk to me, you know, come on, talk to me. Um, but, but I think a lot of the millennials and Gen X and these younger demographics, uh, they still like to, to communicate digitally. Um, they like to be in control. Don't you agree? They like to be in control. Yeah. I, I, that's a perfect example. They don't want to be sold to. Yeah. So I think even some of the video and content, there are pages that we create. I love the fact that you're talking about creating videos about the patient experience, about things that you know subliminally is of interest to them, but they may not talk to you, say it into your face. For yeah. example, uh, I use the, you know, this whole concept of fear. Fear in plastic surgery is, is almost the one thing that everybody shoves under the rug. Yeah. Okay. But when somebody has got their cap and gown on, getting ready for surgery, if you interview them or ask them, are you nervous? Are you a little scared? Over the top, they're, you know, they're, they're scared as all heck. Right. Um, but we don't address that, you know, in, in our marketing and on our website. We don't really do that. I think the videos that you're talking about, about what to expect. And it's not that a fear that I'm going to die. I don't think that they necessarily have that, but they have a fear of the unknown. The right. fear of the unknown of what to expect or how this all works, you know? <laughs> I was, think you know, real self, um, when we did some, we did these journey videos um, a long time ago, but we just did journey videos for breast dog, for gynecomastia, for tummy tuck mommy makeovers. And one of the most popular parts of that series was the anesthesia. And oh. I don't know, maybe people are afraid they're going to fart. I mean, like, and even <laughs> if they do fart, who cares, right? I mean, you're under, and they, I'm hey. sure they've heard a fart plenty of times. Believe me. <laughs> like your insides. <laughs> Whoa. But I think the, I think even the, your follow-up emails, addressing some of those things. If I'm interested in breast augmentation, man, it would be great to have that kind of, if I was a salesperson in a practice, I'd be talking to my webmaster going, hey, I need this, I need this, and I need this, because if we're promoting this procedure, these are the common questions that I'm getting, and I need these things to help me overcome those barriers. Perfect point, yeah. because um, I was speaking to a, a local group in Seattle um, this week, and they were saying that they were getting so busy. And I think a lot of practices are getting so busy. Okay, you're getting so busy, but you can't have them come in as often. Why yeah. not create a series of the most common questions after surgery? Yes. Right. So that way you have thought about your customer all the way through. And they mm -hmm. are thinking about, I did a welcome series with a product that I'm working for. And we did a series of 12 different videos on the most common issues that we saw with customer service. We addressed them right away. Customer service has saved so much time and the number of returns on the product has gone down by 80% in only two months. So right. it's, it's the, another, another great way to use video. It's not just on the sales front. Yeah, no. And, and, and I think you kind of prior to our getting on, you know, you mentioned about uh, reducing the amount of time that you're in consult or getting higher conversions at consult because I've got a more, I, I got a more compliant or educated, you know, patient, which is what we all want. I mean, we all want higher quality patients. And part of that, you got to make them, you don't, they just don't show up. Yeah. So part of that is you, you cultivate that, you know, that, uh, that type of patient that wants to come to your practice and happier patients. Yes, too, exactly. They understand it more. So they're not just 
going in with all of their adrenaline and anxiety, forgetting all the questions that they really meant to ask. Yes. And then going exactly. in, just hoping it goes well, and then not understanding the process, and then thinking that it must have been their fault. You've, mm -hmm. you've, you've offset most of that by proactively creating communication to take care of your customer. Yeah, I, I would agree. Yeah. Um, I'm going to ask one last question before we part. Um, and you can expand on this. Okay. Uh, we talked about a broad range of different types of content marketing topics. Okay. Um, but whether it's the, the type of content that we're producing, the messaging, the, the promotion of it, um, you know, even with new kind of things that are happening, whether it's, you know, Instagram reels and, you know, the, the different formats of, of things. Um, if there is one or two takeaways that if I've got five minutes with you and I want to know what you think is the one or two most important takeaways, what would that or those be? Oh, I mean, we've got such a wide span of people who some are on Instagram, some are not on Instagram, some uh -huh. haven't updated their websites in three years, some <laughs> are doing it all the time. I think the most important thing is to evaluate what you have and really ask yourself if that is what your customers need. And if not, what are the pieces that you can create for them to help them along the way? And then you can figure out the marketing tactics on the back end to figure out how to get that to the right people. But I think I would start with the why and if you have it. And if you don't, you need to figure out how to create it because there are a lot of other physicians and practices that are doing it and they're going to win. Yeah. I, I love the idea of doing a, a, an inventory. What do I've got? What do I got? Where do I start? Um, yeah. A lot of that is kind of when we do assessments and I know you kind of do the same thing. Yeah. Uh, you're assessing, what do I have to, you know, to, to work with? It's right. just like a patient. It's like, I can't get you to where you want to be until I actually speak to you, meet with you, check your body type. What, what do I have to work with? You know, work with me here. Yeah. What have I got to work with? And then I can give you some direction as to, you know, where you want to go, the path that we're going to take to get there. Yeah. And your budget. I mean, you and I are in, we're direct response. I mean, everything that I want to create, I want to create value and I want to create a return on that. So any question that I get from somebody on what should I do is just like, well, what, what do we want to achieve and what, what are your goals? And then I know goals is sort of this overused piece, but it's like, I mean, how much money do you want to make or what procedure yeah. do you want to do? Let's, you want to let's do? make it real. Let's yeah. make it real. Yeah. What are you making now? What do you want it to be? Yeah. Or what kind of volume are you seeing in this? What can you realistically uh, understand that there's always a capacity issue and staffing issue, but what's, what do you want it to be? And the what only other thing I would add to that bill is, um, is I would stay away from this third party thinking that a third party can do your content that understands your tone of voice. What I love about what you're doing at MedShark right now is that you're interviewing your doctors, you're interviewing them so you are oh, able yeah. to really truly understand their tone of voice and um, what matters to them. And, you know, I just, I, I see so much, I'm, I'm a big fan of cheese, so I'm not afraid of cheesy sales things, but if it's cheesy and it's fake and it's third party, no, not interested. I will unfollow you because it's not even you. So I think that that has to that has to change and if it means that you have to like shrink your marketing and only do three of your top favorite things just do your top three favorite things and do them well and then you'll be able to leverage into the other areas when you have time but don't put cheesy stock photos on places when you know that you have something else you know and i think that's the idea is the interesting thing is is when we would do heat mapping Oh. on websites. We would heat map, you know, the homepage and some of the internal pages to see, and it doesn't take too long to get enough data from people that are visiting, especially if a practice is driving, you know, two, three, 5,000 visitors a month, mm -hmm. you can start forming what's working on that page and what's not pretty quickly. Um, it was surprising to me uh, that when we would 
do this on any dental or medical plastic surgery ophthalmolo ophthalmology website, the, the hottest items on the page. Obviously, the uh, before and after galleries is highly clicked onto. We all know that. But the one that always surprised me was the social media icons. Oh. Amazing. The social media, those little Facebook and Instagram little icons, they were almost consistently a hot zone. They were one of the brightest things in that heat map. And it didn't matter where it was. Mm -hmm. I saw some of them where it was up in the banner. You know, they'd have their social media icons up there. It would be highly clicked. And then you'd go through this heat map and it, it starts turning, it's red and yellow at the top because it's hot. And then as you go down, it starts cooling off. So it turns green, it turns blue, and then turns dark blue, which means nobody's going down there mm -hmm. or not spending a lot of time there. But then I would scroll all the way down to the bottom. And even at the bottom of the page, if yeah. they had the social media icons, they were still brightly lit. They were, they're looking for it. This is about reality. They want to know who you are. And I think they feel like social media can help them identify you or learn more about you, not just on your website, which may be sterile or, you know, contrived content. Yeah. I want to see the real you. And I think that's where social media's role is. So integrating your website and social media, I think that all, I think the reality of it. So that stock stuff, I agree with you. That's out. That's, that's, gone. that's gone. Yeah. Um, if, if you're relying primarily on stock photography, I guarantee you uh, your engagement on those pages are not nearly as effective. Yeah. I mean, there's, we could do a hundred of these and maybe we should, um, but it's, you know, it's, there's so much detail into every single piece to do it well. And why not do it well? I mean, I think of these surgeons who have spent decades in, you know, learning how to do every single detail and the procedure isn't going to go well unless you mm -hmm. do it right from the beginning to the very end. Why not do that with the rest of your marketing? It, it yeah. really, truly does make a difference. People are overwhelmed, so they can't or they don't think that they can, but it is possible and it does make a difference. Well, Jen, I'm going to hold you to that. We are going to do uh, future, uh, but it's instead of talking more philosophically, maybe big picture, maybe strate strategic, you know, we probably need to do one that's more, much more tactical. What are very specific things, step-by-step -step things that practices can be doing or how to do those things yeah. that they can start implementing, you know, right away. So uh, let's, let's uh, plan on, I'm going to hold you to that. We're going to have a future um, webcast where we're going to go into a lot more detail. And I can send these to you. These are a couple of, um, I'll, I'll send you a PDF of sort of high lifetime value and high frequency. Video. Oh, okay. Like maybe a checklist and the tools that you need for that kind of a thing. I mean, it, it's like, look, we almost need to focus on one tactic, you know, mm -hmm. per thing. And if you're just getting started, what do you start with? If you've yeah, got where that, do you start? how do you leverage it? And once mm -hmm. you've leveraged it, how do you expand it? And then how do you measure it all, right? Um, so much. It's so fun, though. Yeah, I think if you can send that over, I'll make sure that we also share that as well. Yeah, I'll send but it But I, I, I will hold you to, we're going to do another one where, where you're going to get into some of the tactics because I, I, I always learn something from you. Well, I just, I, I cherish, I, I love our time together, Bill. It's so nice to see you. Thank you again for joining today, Jen. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us for the MedShark Insider with Bill Fukui. Join us next week for another dive into all things medical marketing. All episodes can be streamed at www.medsharkdigital.com slash medshark-insider.